Welcome back to SRB Sensei. If you like this video at any point, like and comment. It's the only way we'll grow. Now let's get into this ridiculous nonsense. Welcome back to hell. If you're ever talking to a guy who claims to have some status, some money, maybe he has both those things, but he's under the radar, he's very low key, you don't really know about him, but somehow you find yourself on a date with this man, okay? Isn't it ironic? Yes, somehow you find yourself on a date with this man. Ironically, you don't somehow find yourself on a date with the man who works at Lowe's. Just a weird coincidence, huh? <laughs> so you're talking to Bill, and Bill knows that you know Mark, and he knows that Mark is very well known in your city, in your town, wherever the fuck you guys are at, or just like in the world maybe, who knows. And so he starts, he starts name dropping. These big guys, these heavy hitters, and you, in fact, do know that those guys are heavy hitters because they do have that exposure and that status, generally maybe in your town, in your city. And so he starts name dropping them and he starts telling you stories about how he like runs in the same circle as them and he knows them. And Nobody is going to respect him. <laughs> Everybody's wall runs about, yeah, you know. You well, yeah, I agree. That's cringe. Get off there, motherfucking D. Why are you sitting with a woman talking about other men? I mean, if anything, talk about how great you are and what you got going on. So, yeah, that's cringe. Because if anything, you're just making her want to F them. Not you. She don't want to F the guy that know the guy. She want to F the guy. That is correct. He's done work with them. And what he is doing, first of all, red flag. Red flag. What he is doing is he's trying to leverage the fact. He's trying to leverage those men, their status and their money. And the fact that he thinks you're probably impressed by that. Well, let's be honest. You are the type of woman to be impressed by power, status, and money like every other woman. So, I mean, the basic concept does make sense. I mean, that's why you're on a date with him. Because you thought he had a little bit of status and money. Yes. He thinks that somehow that those two things are going to correlate. That those two things are going to add up. And I'm going to tell you it doesn't. It certainly does. What it does is name dropping is weak, weird, nobody insecure energy because a confident man or a confident person in general does not need to name drop because name dropping is distasteful as well you know what else is distasteful <laughs> and weak and corny and lame and yada 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 the fact that you have this tiktok page talking about your dating life a confident woman wouldn't need to do that <laughs> This man that you're trying to shame on here has accomplished more than you ever will, I'm sure. You remember that, motherfucker? And he did it in the real world, not in the digital world. So I'm giving more props for that. People who made something of themselves in the real world. It's a lot harder than just sitting in your room talking a bunch of sh**. Look who's talking. And let's be honest, if you were 600 pounds, would you have as many TikTok followers as you have now? Exactly. So is it really talent? That you got that many followers? Of course not. Of, of course not. Of course. And anybody, anybody with etiquette and manners knows that. So immediately he's crossed off. Immediately no. Immediately no. He thinks you're dumb enough to believe him and his lies. His lies. Because nine out of ten times it's a lie. It's a lie. He's not telling the truth. Adios, amigo. I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Yeah, right. You dismissed him. I don't think he's tripping. He was just trying to get some ass that night. It ain't like he was looking to make you his wife. And let's be honest, if you were the type of woman who was the quality who could pull the guys that he was bragging on, then you wouldn't even be on a date with this guy in the first place. You would be on a date with one of them. Or you would have a ring by one of them. But you don't want us to think that deep into it, do you? I've been single for five and a half years. I date, I meet people, but I haven't really met anyone that I'm like... You. It's really interesting to see how people sort of respond in the sense that they go, oh, you're so pretty, or you're so da -da -da -da, as if that is the basis for all relationships. I don't blame people for thinking like that, really, because it's almost impossible to escape. <laughs> I would definitely say one of the biggest things I actually learned was how I would use the idea of who I wanted to meet as some sort of savior to my life. I don't necessarily mean the sort of like knight in shining armor type of scenario, I just mean like. I would think that they were going to be the thing that brought everything together. Again, is a pretty easy thing to understand. What the f are you talking about? I don't know what she's talking about. Maybe that's why she's single. She goes on and on and she's not really putting together coherent sentences. And that would be a deal breaker for me. And I mean, I agree. She's more attractive than probably average. But what rating would you give this woman? 
but yeah, from the outside looking in to, you know, people who don't know any better, it's really perplexing on why a pretty woman would be single for five and a half years. But to me, I know that pretty women are the most cursed in the dating market. I mean, come on. I know you. You know you. And I know you know that I know you. Because they chase you know who. And those are the guys who are least likely to be impressed with your looks. And the least likely to want to settle down. She's single because she thinks she's better than the 90% of guys in her inbox. Along with many, 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 many other things, I'm sure. Hey folks, we'll be back to the video in a second. Be sure to like and comment anything under the video. It's the only thing that's going to help us grow and blow this channel up. But you know how tired I get listening to these dingbats? Really, go ahead and support the content by joining the Patreon or the YouTube membership. It really gives me motivation to keep breaking down these numb skulls. For low as $5 a month, you get one exclusive video a week. And the more memberships I get, the more perks I'll add. So show some love to your sensei. <laughs> How about no? Something that became quite telling for me was how I would always sort of have this dream of who I wanted somebody to be or look at them for their potential rather than looking at them for who they actually are. Yeah, that was definitely one of the, <laughs> the hardest cycles to break. So that was one of the hardest, like, things to look at where that was actually rooted in. Because I, without a doubt, used the idea of who I wanted them to be to help save me from so many other things. Men are inside of women's down their th guys are literally into a girl's we'll return after these messages well right but if you were so great you wouldn't need some higher tier man to come save you from your own bullshit. you don't have your crap together and you're going to be a burden on any man's life that you get with and that's why you're still single because they realize that that i actually have to confront in life that's actually a pretty complicated thing but maybe i'll go through it another time overall a big part of it was fully acknowledging that the person that I am going to be partnered with in life isn't necessarily going to be the perfect person for me in the way that I want them to be. I think a lot of this actually comes down to understanding our needs and what we are actually looking for in relationships. Overall, I just realized that I wasn't looking at relationships or dating for the person. I was looking at it for the potential or for this perfection. Again, we're not so much taught about the relationship itself as much as we are taught about how it should look or just the fact that we need to get one you're part of the problem you're part of the problem you have no idea what it is to be in a relationship a real relationship where you're making compromises you're putting up with someone's bad side to get to the good side just that balance caring about somebody else more than you care about yourself you've never done that You've been selfish for, what, 30-something years? The longer women stay without being in a serious long-term relationship, the less qualified they are for one. So it's only getting worse day by day. I feel sorry for the guy who's actually going to end up with it. I don't want to be that guy. Being single has taught me more about relationships than being in a relationship ever did. <laughs> what you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. The best way that you could possibly bond with your wife when something stressful is happening is to listen. Listen in a curious way and ask her more about what she thinks about it. Don't come in and try to problem solve unless she asks you to. Or, here's another idea that's going to be very controversial. You could shut the f*** up. And this is why the power dynamic should be the man is running sh I tell you how we gonna deal with it when you stressed out and got a problem. You not gonna tell me how I should react when you got a problem. I'm the leader and the problem solver. You're not setting the tone in the house. And if what you're saying is true, just don't come to me with that shit. Call your girlfriends or something. If you don't want a solution to your problem, leave me the fuck out of it. You ain't about to stress me out. See, women these days think they dictate men. They think they're the authority figures in the household or just the authority figures over men, period. Even in social situations, women think they run men. See what happened to women when they don't have men to guide them? I think I understand why men used to handle women the way they did back in the day, if you know what I mean. What did the five fingers say to the face? You whore. Literally express curiosity like you would with a friend. With a friend, you would not be able to rush in there and tell your friend to, for example, quit his job if he doesn't like working and it's that stressful. That probably wouldn't be something you would say to your friend if your friend complained about his boss. But guys say this to their wives like all the time. Like, why don't you just quit? Well, I mean, things aren't really that easy. That job is part of their self-concept, right? 
and it makes them feel good when things are going well. Certainly, quitting might be one option, but how about expressing curiosity about how she feels about the job? Well, if a guy's telling his woman to quit her job, it's because he can afford all the bills. And her having a job seem like it's causing more trouble than what it's worth because she's stressed out and coming home and bringing that stress to him instead of sucking D. You are never going to meet anybody with that kind of mentality about women, you sick son of a bitch. You get to say that about a woman. Why can't you say women are wrong when they're wrong? You want to be making moves on the street, have no attachments, allow nothing to be in your life that you cannot walk out on in 30 seconds flat. Okay, first of all, I didn't miss the red flags. I looked at them and thought, damn, that's sexy. And that's my problem. 